to death. Why? Because you can't have a new birth until the old one has come to an end. You can't have one birth on top of another birth. The first life had to end before the new life could begin. The old had to go so the new could come. So his testimony was, I have been crucified with Christ. He has taken me to the cross. He put me to death. So the next part of his testimony was, I no longer live. Just turn to your neighbor and say, I have been crucified with Christ. Even if, even if you're not a believer, that is still true for you, so you can say it. I have been crucified with Christ. I, I want you to say it with some conviction. Can we have that one again? We'll just roll that back. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I have been crucified with Christ. Now turn to them again and say, I no longer live. Now I want you to respond to what that person just said to you and say, thank God. We should be thankful that we no longer live. That that old life is dead, buried, finished with. This is what our water baptism signified. That was the funeral service of your old life. It's dead, buried, finished with forever. Hallelujah. Come on, stand up on your feet. Stand up and praise God. Come on, thank Him. Hallelujah. My old life has gone! I'm not in bondage to my old life! I am free! Hallelujah! Okay, you may be seated. Praise God. If I had a black face, you'd have stood up without me asking you to. <laughs> Those of you who were here last year will know what I mean. <laughs> now, I no longer live. The next line, but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. I say Christ lives in me. Now Paul, in this verse to the Corinthians, begins to draw out what that means. Now, this is true for me because I'm a believer, not because I'm a preacher. It's true for you, whether you're a preacher or not, because you're a believer. Christ is in you. So he says, he is my wisdom from God, your wisdom from God. Let's make this really personal, shall we? He's my wisdom from God. So Paul says he's he. He, the one who lives in me, is my righteousness. Now, he doesn't say that he's made me righteous. Hello? In fact, if he is my righteousness, I don't need a righteousness of my own. I don't need to try to make myself righteous. He is my righteousness. I have perfect righteousness in me because the perfect one lives in me. He is my righteousness. I said, he is my righteousness. Yeah. 
Because he lives in me, he hasn't made me righteous. I don't live a life that can be compared with that of Jesus Christ. But my righteousness means that I have been put into a right relationship with God and made totally acceptable to Him. Not because of who I am or anything I have done, but because Christ, the one who lives in me, has become my righteousness. He is my righteousness. I am not my righteousness. He is my righteousness. So you see, Paul says, no one was made righteous by the law. But now there is a new righteousness from heaven, a new righteousness that is by faith. That is faith in the Son of God, faith in Jesus Christ. He is my righteousness. Why try to make myself righteous if He is my righteousness? So you see, what Paul is saying, it's not I, but Christ. The mistake that so many Christians make is they think God is trying to change you. Listen, God has got no intention of trying to change you because He knows it will never work. What he did was to exchange you. He put you to death and made Christ your righteousness. So we are the righteousness of God, not because we have suddenly become perfect in our behavior, but because he is our righteousness. Now, the purpose of God is to be holy. There's no revival without holiness. I said there's no revival without holiness. Most people, most Christians, are afraid of this word holiness because they think holiness is beyond them, an unattainable goal. They may know the Scripture, be holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. They may look at what Peter says, be holy in all you do, and think, well, that must be for the spiritual freaks. There's no way that I could live up to Scriptures like that. But Paul gives us this revelation. He is our holiness. And where is He? He is in you. You don't have to create a holiness or try to be holy in your own strength because that will never ever work because in your natural life, in your flesh, there dwells nothing good. So you can't make your self-life righteous, you can't make your self-life holy, and nor can God. Amen. 